What's up guys, we are Diana and Phil. Diana is from the United States and I'm from Germany. And in today's video, we are going to eat like a German Oma for the entire day. Phil's German grandmother. Let's go. So if you are a millennial like we are, you probably grew up with certain things as a kid. My grandma lived in our house, so there was big influence of what she ate, passed on to what my mom made, and then of course what we ate as kids as well. Diana, she was not very familiar with it. So from her perspective, that was kind of interesting to see a couple of those things. And today we're gonna take you on a little journey and show you what my German grandmother made. Okay, welcome to the Frühstück, the breakfast. Let's start off with the main thing. The one thing I always had to eat as a kid, this was the only type of bread we had. Well, sometimes we had a little bit of white bread toast, but this thing, I have a love and hate relationship. This is just gray bread. This stuff can be amazing if it's super fresh. You gotta stand up for this cutting. But I think if it's not that fresh, it's not that great. Oh, wow, you're so good at slicing it. Most Germans have the slicing machine. Zoom, zoom, Do zoom. a lot of Germans have the slicing machine? I think so. Back in the day, we always had either margarine or like a actual piece of butter. And we called this <laughs> butter and this good butter. Gute butter. Gute butter? Butter. <laughs> All right, what do I put on this? Is it just butter bread? Jam, some type of jam, strawberry, raspberry, or very traditional for my grandma's generation and my parents still. Honey. Honey with butter? Yeah, I'll, I made do, a mistake. I'll do with butter. Alright, I'm gonna go with the honey bread. Mm. Loading up today. I don't know why you hate on this gray bread so much. And it's because I had too much of that in my life. Mm -hmm. It's all I got. <laughs> Dude, I forgot how good butter tastes with jam. Okay, and then another selection. These perfect circular, cheap, floppy, Sausage variations. Here we have a nice salami and then we have a mortadella with a little bit of veggies in there and then some kind of cheese and they come out of these cheap like one euro or less plastic things and I think as a kid we ate a lot of those. Yummy. I bet people still do this today though. Do I put cheese on it too? Like ham and cheese sandwich? No. What? No. That's, that's not my grandma's generation. Huh? The toppings that's expensive, so if you go for that, oh. then do the other one then. You just do this? <laughs> um, I have to admit, I still like the, the mozzarella stuff quite a bit. Not this one though. This tastes like air. However, what was way better than those freaking grey bread slices is just a white bread roll. I like when bread is fresh out of the oven, it's just so warm, you can see yeah. the heat. But one highlight of the breakfast was boiled egg, very normal, and you put it and a little egg stand in Germany. These are so interesting to me. They feel like an, a movie or some antique shop. Yeah. I think my dad's mother used these. Yeah. Funny thing, my grandma only had eggs once a week because I think they still thought that eggs are bad for you, that uh, the cholesterol levels are yeah. getting too high if you eat too many eggs. Too However, nice. this is an egg spoon. It's smaller than the teaspoon. You got a little flat thing. So, and then... You just hit it a bit and then you have your egg here and then you eat it also with the egg spoon. Uh, look how perfect this mm. with the hole. I mean, nice beautifully egg. done. Oh yeah, Deanna poked the holes in. That was a whole thing in the past, getting a little tiny hole in the egg so it doesn't crack while boiling it. Yeah. And you first use that needle, right? Yeah. And then we got this egg poker. Yeah, we got an egg poker. And very nice with that. A little bit of salt okay. on the egg. And then you keep spooning it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to put it on my bread roll. Can I do that? Yeah. Well, wow, that came out nicely. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. This is a meal I'm down for. I think this is the best way to eat your egg. I remember when we first visited Germany though, and we had like a, a breakfast with your parents, they just put out a spread of meat and cheese with bread and jams. That's what they do every morning. Yeah. If you can relate to this, let us know uh, below if you still eat similar stuff or yeah. from your childhood eating similar stuff, maybe with your grandparents. What did your grandma serve you? We're gonna finish up a bit and then we'll see you a little later for lunch. Bye. All right, so it's about one o'clock right now, which means it's time for Mittagessen or lunch. 
And we're gonna attempt one of Phil's grandmother's recipes and I use attempt loosely. Let's go. Okay, so here's the thing. We want to try to recreate something that my grandma did and that me and my siblings really looked forward to every time we had it. Meatballs, kind of her style, uh, frikadellen. But the main thing is a potato salad. And I said it so many times before, so all these potato salads from the supermarkets, they just do not compare to a good homemade, handmade potato salad, preferably by a grandma. I never tried to recreate it, and my grandma passed away a couple years ago, like I said, but my mom found her handwritten recipe, and we have it, and we're trying to recreate it today. All right, so first things, we're gonna cook some potatoes, however, we're not gonna peel them, we're gonna do pay kartoffeln. So we're gonna cook them with the peel and then we peel them afterwards. And of course with the potatoes, a little bit of salt. All right, potatoes are gonna boil. Now, crucial part, we have to prepare the sauce. There it is, we're looking at the recipe. Let's taste this. This should be a little bit of that taste, right? Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it reminds me of something. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's good. Oh. We got a lot of sauce. I hope the potato ratio will be good. But uh, next step is gonna be preparing the meatballs a la grandma. A la oma. Yeah. All right, so for the preparation of the meatballs, we gotta mix some stuff together, and I thought we'll make Deanna do that, so... Uh, Gonna handle the meat. Exactly. Rings off. All right, we start with the meat into the bowl, please. We went to the butcher and got the meat. Look at this. Did we get the one with knoblauch or without? Yeah, with. So, we have met with garlic. Um, I wonder if that's a lot. Maybe use three quarters of that. Save a little bit. Okay. What's oh, so cute? You think your hands gonna keep? My hands are gonna stay clean. Oh yeah. Is that, that, is that enough? A little more? All right. Next, we gotta add. I would say probably two eggs. Why Aya? Yeah. Very cool. And then mix that up nicely, please. Dig in there. Use the hands. I'm mixing it up so nice. Come on. Oh, gross. You like it? Mm, so nice. The breadcrumbs. Put some pepper on. And then a little bit of nutmeg. It feels good. It feels like a meatball-y, ready to be in balls. Yeah, I think the first time I made this uh, as a student moving out of the home, I forgot totally about the breadcrumbs. I had just used nutmeg to get that consistency. So I used like oh. half of, a, of this uh, little pot here, this little can. Y you can imagine how that tasted. Yeah. It just tasted horrible like that this stuff. Horrible. And I was so sad. I wasted like five euros on, on minced meat. Yeah. The good minced meat. You I don't do that as a German. You waste money on minced meat. Ready? Okay, I got one ball ready. Yum. Is this ball too big? Oh, it's a good size actually. You can flatten them a little bit because they go up a bit. Oh yeah. Are we experimenting a bit with the shape? Yeah, he wants to make it into a hamburger patty. No, I, I just think they, they will rise a little bit from the cooking, so. So that's Phil's, this one's Phil's, that one's mine. We'll just experiment, do some different shapes. Well, should I make it into a heart? No, if you can. Maybe. Try, heart shaped. Meatball. I'm just playing with our food. That's a heart? That's your best heart? Yeah. Those are some big meatballs. My grandma made them a little smaller. I like big balls! That's what it's supposed to look like. Really? Yeah, that one is. Oh, nice! Oh, nice! That's perfect. They need to be brown. Alright, we got the meatballs going. They're almost done. The potatoes. They are almost done. And we found a better bowl, actually. We didn't know we had this wow, one. Wow, shit. So maybe we should have done this a little later. I think this has to be fairly hot. So I'm gonna do no, my grandma never did. Put it in the microwave. And put this in the microwave. What's <laughs> in here? Oh, is something in there? What is that? Oh, I forgot I left it. Wow, here we are, grill masters. Those are burning. This is the family recipe, they have to be burned. All right, and microwave stuff. Some warm, toasty. <laughs> All right, it's time to peel the potatoes, and this is the crucial part. Gonna peel the potatoes. 
Wow. Okay, yeah, that's the problem. We don't really have those little sticky things, the tridents you put into the potato to hold it. So we have to use a fork and then peel it off like this. That's a dirty potato. Wow, it works. Yeah, it's a dirty potato. The fork peeling or in the salt water we call Salzkartoffeln. Nice. And these we call Pellkartoffeln. Now this stuff is still warm and, you, and we just cut them in slices like this oh, into really? there. Oh, no! Hold it like that. No, it broke, it broke into two. Oh my god, they're hot. Ha! Ah. We're crushing this. Dude, the inside, I can't touch We're the inside. We're doing such a good job. That's the problem, look how it's crumbling. No! See, that's what happens with the potatoes. I don't get it. Are they a different type of potato? I don't know. Yeah, and I remember when my grandma did it, it was nice slices. I'm this gonna is... have mashed potatoes. No, these are okay. Yeah, they look, look good. Look at that. That's not... That's not... They were good. Now they're on the floor. <laughs> okay, we're gonna speed this up a bit. They're on the table. All right, and that is our final potato salad. It smells good. It smells good. I can't wait to try it. It looks actually pretty good. The potatoes broke a bit, but uh, maybe it's not that bad. We also got the meatballs over. They turned out fairly big, but they look good as well. This is kind of what they looked like when my family made it. A little flatter, so you just have to fry them from each side and not all around. I like the balls. Oh, dude, if this tastes anything like my grandma's, we're gonna eat this four times a week from now on. Yeah. There? Of course. Wow, that's a lot. Of course, second meatball, just for the aesthetics. I'm gonna start with... Wow. One. Moment of truth. So Alma... This is for you, Grim. It's similar, it's not as good. I feel like it's not as strong flavored. Yeah. We think we pulled the potatoes out too late. Yeah. They need to be a little al dente, like... This looks good. That's what they're supposed to look. Let's see what that tastes like. No, no work. Mm -hmm. We call them hackepillen, not frikadellen. Hackepillen. It's good. This is not as good as the one from my grandma, but this gives me big hope. Like, we can refine this recipe and come closer to that. Yeah, I always say, like, whenever we make something, it might not be perfect the first time. I feel like we're in a, a game, like The Sims or, or something, where you need to get better at it until your skill level is higher. You know? So maybe we need to try it like five times until it's decent. Yeah, cooking is a skill, learning curve. Mm -hmm. This is good, but do you like the potato salad? Yeah, I, I think it's awesome. I think flavor-wise, I like vinegar potato salad a lot. Mm -hmm. I think this potato salad that we made is already better than most of the mayonnaise ones you get from mm -hmm. the supermarket. So let's talk a little bit about how your grandmother ate. That generation and my parents' generation as well it was very normal just to eat once warm a yeah. day for lunch. And um, as soon as I moved out, I started eating twice warm, at least. That's totally a generational gap, probably, because we just live in this world of abundance. And convenience. Other things that was normal for her generation with her husband, my grandpa, was, for example, that they didn't eat meat as often. Fridays was yes, fish, fish day. Days. And the reason behind that was because they were Catholic and Friday is apparently the day where Jesus got crucified and that's why they didn't eat as fancy. No meat. And then on a Saturday is usually a day where you have the least fancy lunch. So it's, they just made something quick or easy. And then on a Sunday is usually the day where you eat a little better than, than on the rest of the weekdays. So on Sunday there was like roast, meat roast, meatloaf, whatever. Oh, another thing that was very common for a midday lunch main course was German style pancakes. And we make them, yeah, Pfannkuchen in a big pan with applesauce. My grandma was just an amazing cook. She learned cooking at cooking school and uh, she always made the food. Yeah, that was some of the best food I ate yeah. growing up. I'm glad we're getting to kind of, you know, make some of her recipes and yeah. honor her in this way. I never got to meet Phil's grandmother. Hopefully we can make it better next time. Yeah. <laughs> It's a history lesson. Yeah. We made a little plate and we're gonna bring it over to Phil's parents. I turn around for one second and look at this. He took a bite of the last meatball. Maybe the window's open. There was a raccoon coming in and he took a bite. And, and then I scared him off. So you should thank me for rescuing that. Oh, young, young. Holy smokes, that was so good. I feel like we're eating like 
fills Oma, but probably way bigger portions than she actually ate. Yeah. This was a bit of my childhood. Like I feel like back there already with the taste and everything, just want to keep eating. And yeah. uh, you're giving away my childhood <laughs> to yeah. my parents. Because I wanted to see, especially if your mom feels like it's the same. But I could have eaten that in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna give some to his parents and see. We probably won't film the reaction, but we'll let you know what they think. All right, we just dropped it off and your mom was there. She liked it, she but liked she it. said basically the same. It tastes a little bit different. Something's yeah. off. So challenge accepted. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna keep trying to make Oma's potato salad. I'm so full. I over ate so badly. Well, it's time for coffee and kuchen. Already? Yes, it's four. It's coffee and kuchen time. I'm so full, I can't. Nope, time to eat. We must eat like Oma. That's what she would say. It's time to eat. Suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time to keep eating. Yeah. It's my favorite time of the day, which is coffee and kuchen. Yeah, it's 4.30. We're eating again because you probably know with the grandparents, they invite you over for coffee and cake. At least in Germany, that's what they do. Especially when it's nice outside like it is today and it's sunny, you hear the birds chirping. We got some coffee Yeah. and we have some staples. I don't know what you had, but my one grandma, when she invited us, they always had this lemon roll things. It's like this cake roll. And then these. Himbe. Yeah, so we have this raspberry one with a cream and then an apple one. To be honest, at the bakeries, the uh, selection of the cakes wasn't really what I remember that much. This one is pretty iconic, but even more so, it would be the jelly one with the whole strawberries in the jelly. Yeah. That's the one I always had at my grandma's house. We're just coming to strawberry season right now, and I, I see strawberries are on sale and stuff, so maybe in the next few weeks they'll make more strawberry cake. Give you a piece of the oh, apple. It's a huge piece. I'm just gonna cut. <gasps> oh my goodness, triangles and rectangles, it's not consistent. Wow. Wow. Oh, another one that we don't have is the usual sugar cake, the Zuckerkuchen. It's just yeah. this dry cake, but it's I think the it worst. And it's what all the grandmas gave their grandkids. Yeah, we opted out of that one today. Looks good, doesn't look as dry. Yeah. It has a nice little custard layer in between the raspberry and the dough. Mmm, right. <laughs> yeah. I like this. You're so good. It's I love it. Nice and light. I don't know if we eat per se what a German Oma would eat. We're not claiming to be speaking for all German Omas, just Phil's German Oma. I don't like the sugar frosting oh, they have on does. so many cakes in Germany. Mm -hmm. The raspberry one hands down better for me. Yeah. I think with the apple, I prefer like a Streusel topping. Also, we got those two from the bakery and this one from the frozen that section. That one's frozen, yeah. You want this please? Oh, yes. Oh, it's still slightly piece. frozen, it's the best. Oh. I think it's perfect right now. Mm, it's very lemony. Yeah. Zitron. So we just included that because I think that's definitely a grandparent and Oma thing, the coffee and kuchen. I don't know if I can even eat dinner. Gonna have a little other piece, maybe take a nap, and we'll see you later for or dinner. Run. All right, we're out. Diana's going out for a run, so kudos to that. I think we're eating a bit too much, but at least we're staying active. As you can see, the sun is setting already on the horizon behind us. Maybe we'll build up a little bit of an appetite to go for the final meal of the day, the dinner, in a second. All right, we're coming to an end. Uh, that was definitely the right decision to come out. And as you can see, first time in Germany outside with a t-shirt. It's been a while, so spring is here for the first time right now at the end of March. That's kind of nice, I hope that it will stay and uh, we'll see you on the inside. So for Abendessen or dinner, what's the weirdest thing that you always said? My family, we always had a warm dinner. Like dinner was always a warm meal and it was always the meal we sat down and ate together because my parents both worked, we went to school. It was never like a cold meal. Yeah, yeah. so I think that's pretty normal. It's what you see in the movies too. In America, the big family meal is always dinner, right? Yeah. And I think a good amount of people do that in Germany too. For us, it never was that. It was always lunch the biggest. And then yeah. for evening, especially in the older generations, what my grandma had and what we often had when I was a kid is breakfast all over again. Abendbrot. Yeah, it was just the smaller meal. It was cold with basically the same toppings, although no egg in the evening, a little bit of uh, variations. Like you can have some cornichons on the side. I like these. Mm. 
But then again, just the gray bread slice with some sausage on it. Same gray bread, you, can't, you, gotta, you gotta use it up. Germans eat a lot of bread and by today's standards, I don't know if it's that good to eat that amount of bread. We like- Probably not. At right now in our, our daily diet, when we're not doing like an Oma challenge, we don't eat a lot of bread. No. So sometimes we'll have like Aubin, Aubin brot. Yeah, evening bread. Evening bread, <laughs> but we'll usually heat up pretzels. I really like yeah. frozen pretzels See, heat up. Even in the name, evening bread, yeah. we say Aubin brot. Mm -hmm. However, one thing that was in the evening, a little more than in the morning is sausage. And in Germany, they love this canned sausage. Because especially in the older generation, my grandparents, after the war, not everybody had a fridge, I think. Oh. So a lot of stuff was canned yeah. or in these mason jars. Yeah, just made, fermented or something. Yeah, so it's, it lasts longer. There's a lot of stuff like Sülze, Metwurst, or this one. Hmm. The Schwartenwurst, we all know from our other video, it's awesome to fry, but you can also just put it on a bread roll or slice of bread. This is Phil's favorite like food, the Schwartenwurst. We made a video meal of that whole meal. This is his favorite meal. Like, you it love it. So, <laughs> this looks awesome, right? Oh my goodness. Wow. Would you look at that? Lekker. Isn't that yummy? So, there we go to end the day. I think it tastes better fried. Personally, mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just interesting. I think obviously what you eat has a lot to do with the culture and the economy and the country status at the time and what's available. I mean, we have these like refrigerated boxes now and I cannot believe just like however many years ago it wasn't yeah. as common. It's, it's a little baffling. Yeah. We live in a surplus now. <clears throat> it just ridiculous of uh, we're living in a world of abundance yeah. and we just eat way too much crap yeah but anyway that was our day eating like a german grandma and i'm super curious like a lot of these things i explain it is what my grandmas ate what they made what they gave us when we were a kid like i said one lived in a house so i ate a lot what she made we visited the other one every week and uh, she had a lot of good stuff too. Grandmas, they just know how to cook, yeah. right? Anyways, let us know what your grandmother made or what your parents made or what you eat for that matter and what country you're from. Yeah, every yeah. country, Germany as well as any other country, very interesting, always in food. Uh, but this is gonna be it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. A big thank you to everyone who watches our videos and supports us and a special thank you to our patrons for supporting us and helping us to make videos like these. We hope you guys are all staying safe during this crazy time and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!